Hey all, welcome back to the Real Life Pharmacology Podcast. I am your host, pharmacist Eric Christensen. Thank you so much for listening today. I hope you enjoy this episode. Uh, as always, go to reallifepharmacology.com, uh, subscribe there, get your uh, top 200 study guide. Uh, it's a 31-page PDF where I lay out some of the most important clinical uh, practice pearls that you're actually going to see out there and things that uh, I have certainly seen in, in practice. So again, absolutely free to you. And we'll simply update you when we've got uh, new you know, products coming out as well as obviously new new podcasts and, and free materials as well. So again, reallifepharmacology.com. All right, so the drug today was a request uh, from somebody, I believe, on LinkedIn. And I wanted to uh, cover it a little bit. So it's ketamine, which is kind of a unique drug that's historically been used in uh, veterinarian medicine. Um, It is technically classified as an anesthetic. Uh, So in humans, I guess, it's potentially useful as an alternative uh, in general anesthesia. Uh, Other off-label potential uses... Uh, Maybe kind of a last-line therapy, rapid treatment in unipolar depression. Uh, Maybe see it off-label, agitation purposes, sedation purposes, uh, maybe rarely for analgesia management as well in the ICU. So there's there's a lot of kind of unique things with ketamine which um, make it really challenging and somebody experienced with using ketamine. Um, definitely is recommended. Uh, it's got a, a couple of different uh, mecha- primary mechanisms uh, on how this drug works. So it's got some opioid agonist activity, um, you know, generally not to the extent of a true uh, full opioid agonist, such as, you know, fentanyl, for example, or, or morphine. Um, but that's one of the mechanisms that it, it works by, and it makes sense that there may be some uh, pain relief and sedation associated with that. Uh, it also uh, can block glutamate, which if you remember glutamate, it's an excitatory neurotransmitter, and it blocks glutamate uh, at the NMDA receptor. And so that'll come up in uh, drug interactions as, as well when I talk about those in the uh, future. Uh, so, uh, some uh, potential advantages, I guess, of, of ketamine compared to maybe some other traditional um, anesthetic agents. Uh, generally, at, at lower to, to moderate doses, it's not going to impact the airway uh, as much as, say, a, a full opioid agonist like fentanyl, for example, um, may help kind of reduce the need or the need for higher propofol dosages. Uh, may also be um, advantageous in patients who are already opioid tolerant, where that escalation of, of further opioid doses um, gets to uh, very high levels. You know, use of, of ketamine may be uh, advantageous in, in that patient population as well. Uh, therapeutic uh, dosages versus overdose uh, dosages, uh, there definitely is a difference. Um in general anesthesia, uh, many agents will uh, lower blood pressure, which can lead to a challenging situation in patients who already are hypotensive. So ketamine does have uh, the potential clinical quirk at, at lower to, to moderate doses used in, in anesthesia uh, that it can have a, a mild sympathetic effect in raising blood pressure and raising heart rate, cardiac output, and uh, intracranial pressure as well. So, uh, again, this can be good and bad. Take a a patient with uh, severe ischemic heart disease or severe hypertension, and we add ketamine on. That can certainly have a deleterious effect, a bad effect, uh, on patients with those uh, pre-existing conditions there. Uh, Other things in the adverse effect uh, profile category, uh, you need to to be aware of the emergent effect with ketamine, and this is maybe one of the reasons why it isn't used uh, as a mainstay uh, anesthetic agent, is uh, what's called the emergence effect. And that's basically 
psychedelic type symptoms that can happen upon a patient uh, sort of coming to after anesthesia. So hallucinations, um, you know, vivid dreams, nightmares, terrors, things like that can happen to patients. And obviously that's not a very, uh, you know, comfortable thing for our patients uh, to have to go through if they do experience that. So um, definitely uh, be, be really careful about that. Be very aware of the psychedelic nature of the uh, ketamine uh, medication there. Again, dosing is, is critical. Um, you know, maybe at, at lower to moderate dose, uh, you're probably more in the range of some of those psych symptoms, agitation, hallucination, um, altered senses. Um, and again, as we get more into the overdose stage, which you may see in, um, you know, a drug abuse type situation, uh, then we're going to go more towards uh, sedation, coma, and obviously death can happen as well if the overdose is uh, severe enough there. So um, contraindications, things to, th to think about. So if you know a drug like this has the potential uh, to cause uh, psychiatric symptoms like hallucinations, for example, well, a patient population you're probably going to avoid it in is you know, patients with schizophrenia. So definitely think about that mental health background um, and making sure that we're probably avoiding this agent in patients uh, who have had issues uh, with those things in the past. Uh, of course, this is a controlled uh, substance, substance. There's risk of dependence. And then obviously associated with that dependence, um, when patients come off that medication, we do have uh, the potential with uh, you know, psychotic symptoms and associated with withdrawal as well. All right, so that kind of wraps up the first section. Let's get into drug interactions after a quick break here. If you're in the market for pharmacist board certification study material, uh, the MTM exam, geriatric exam, ambulatory care, pharmacotherapy, uh, or NAPLEX, definitely go check out meded101.com slash store. Uh, we've got links to everything there. Uh, if you're another healthcare professional just looking for more clinical practice pearls, experience with uh, reading cases, clinical interpretation of medications, lab monitoring, all that good stuff, drug interactions, uh, we've got a lot of resources, uh, books on Amazon, uh, Audible books for free, which you can, you can get your first Audible book uh, for free. So definitely I've had numerous people uh, take advantage of that. So go do that if you've never tried Audible. Uh, but again, go check out the resources, uh, meded101.com slash store helps support our sponsor, which obviously helps uh, keep this podcast free uh, for all to uh, be educated from. All right, so let's finish up with drug interactions on ketamine. So you've got to think about uh, the CNS depressant activity of the drug. Um, that can certainly have additive effects when we're talking about opioids, benzodiazepines, other you know sleeper type medications. That's one of the things first and foremost I would think about. Uh, other considerations, um, I think about the metabolism of drugs and if there's any uh, interactions there. So ketamine is actually primarily metabolized through CYP. 2B6, that's B as in boy. Um, and to be honest, currently uh, there aren't a lot of commonly used drugs uh, that are out there on the market that are, are going to potentially create this interaction. So uh, any medication that would inhibit uh, CYP2B6 uh, could potentially raise concentrations of, of ketamine. Fortunately, again, pretty rare that you're going to come across a, a drug that can do that. Um, but always uh, a good idea just to, to run a quick drug interaction screens, particularly if a patient's uh, on maybe a new drug or, you know, maybe a drug you're not comfortable or familiar with. Uh, also in the metabolic pathway of ketamine uh, is CYP3A4. So it's partially broken down, not primarily, but partially broken down by CYP3A4. So CYP3A4 inhibitors let's take your classic example of grapefruit juice, can increase concentrations, while CYP3A4 inducers 
uh, your rifampins, your tegretols, your phenytoins, those can all uh, lower concentrations of ketamine. So again, if you're using this for anesthesia purposes and you know, you've know you got somebody with a history of, of seizures and maybe they're on carbamazepine or phenytoin or something, um, you got to recognize uh, that those concentrations of ketamine uh, could be lowered uh, due to, to that interaction. And the last drug interaction I wanted to mention uh, is associated with its mechanism of action. So if you remember, uh, I mentioned that ketamine can antagonize NMDA, again, blocking glutamate at those NMDA receptors. There's also another drug that's used in dementia. I believe I've covered it already, um, but that drug is memantine, or brand name Nemenda. And so there's an increased risk of kind of additive effects when we add ketamine on top of a, a dementia patient potentially uh, that's taking memantine. All right, so I think that's going to wrap it up for today. Hope you enjoyed the podcast. Uh, questions, comments, reach out on LinkedIn, uh, Eric Christensen, PharmD, BCPS, BCGP, or uh, mededucation101 at gmail.com. Uh, go so support the sponsor, meded101.com slash store. Also go subscribe at reallifepharmacology.com. Get your free 31-page uh, PDF, top 200 study guide. Great if you're in you know, pharmacology classes or if you're taking board exam soon. Uh, nice, unique resource there. Uh, if you enjoyed this episode, enjoy the podcast in general, uh, please, please leave a rating review on iTunes or wherever you're listening. It's greatly appreciated. Obviously helps us reach more people. Uh, and grow the, the podcast and share the uh, wealth of education that uh, I've been fortunate enough to, to learn along the way. Uh, thanks so much for listening. Take care. Hope you have a great rest of your day.